You can go out with a bag, man. <laughs> get the call of duty to learn her. Here we go. I guess we need roll call. Oh, yes. here, he's going to be late. Commissioner Hope? Present. Commissioner Roberts? Present. Commissioner Miller? Present. Commissioner Strayer? Present. Commissioner Casper is going to be late. Commissioner Goss? Present. All commission members present with the exception of Mayor Heath and Kelly Castleberry, who will be arriving shortly. Okay, well, if you were the mayor, you would say, Greg, I'll turn the meeting over to you at this point. Uh, I am going to in turn turn the meeting over to Gusty Steele, who's, as you all know, the chair of our EDA, or now, what do we call it, Gusty Main Street? Main Street, Michigan. Yep. Michigan uh, uh, organization. And he's going to do a relatively brief presentation on what that means for us, what uh, next steps are going forward uh, with that program. Uh, there's going to be a lot of activity uh, coming up here in the next few months, some of which involves, uh, or they would like to have uh, the city commission involved. And uh, so with that, uh, Dusty, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, first, I'd like to start by thanking all of you for your great partnership with the organization. Um, it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for you guys because you guys stepped up. You made that commitment of 35,000 years for five years, which allowed us to get in the financial position to go out and search for a director, which we're still doing. We're still working in abuse and we still have to um, follow up to do with our Main Street director. As you know, the um, release on October 28th, Governor Weber announces three new cities to the, to the uh, Main Street program, and that is Adrian, Coldwater, and Rogers City. There are now 24 cities in the state of Michigan that have been designated as a Main Street community. There are three sections in the Main Street community. There's the engaged level, which we were in. That was the first three years in which we had to learn how to adopt their approach, to have a four-step approach, and to start organizing our committees and our, and our, our different work um, plans in a fashion that they do to show that we had a commitment to that. Um, of course, COVID happened through all that, but we still maintained all of our meetings and did very well. If you looked at our agendas today, they're color-coded by the four major sections of design, uh, promotion, economic vitality, and organization. And each of those have categories where we're going to learn in depth of how to be more effective at executing work plans and uh, transformational strategies in the, in the downtown area. Um, right now, we're in area nine of the 10 sections of Michigan. And our partners in this area and region in the southeast, Blissfield, has received mastery level, which is the next level. Howell we won it last year. Bowen said he won it this year as Main Street America. Um, Milan is still in the select level. We watched a lot of the stuff they did to help, help us get to where we were going. And Celine is a master of this. So pretty good names in our side of the in our area in the southeast that we're going to be able to share resources with. Um, and do work with to, to improve our, our effectiveness as a board. The board is, is a hands-on board, as you know, there's a lot of activity that needs to be done that's um, very hands-on. We've had a lot of different new faces join the DDA, and we have a lot of young energy and blood in there that are working hard. Um, 
And if you guys didn't see the video, I'll pass it around with the video that we had to send up in lieu of being in Lansing to do the presentation um, was done fantastically, I thought, and it had very big impact. And we were pretty excited about the whole thing. The first step in the process we're going to be um, experiencing is something called the baseline assessment. And this is where they go to the community for input um, and they gather a lot of information from all sectors of our community. They're going to do a, a number of meetings, the first of which will come November 30th, which the first meeting of the day will be from 8 to 9 30, will be the Main Street Board of Directors and then city staffs after that. Then we have building owners, which we're acquiring names right now for the survey that we put out there. Actually, Michelle put out there, and we're starting to add to it. And there's quite a few names showing up. Then we're going to have downtown business owners, and then you guys will be city officials. Um, either we'll have to announce that as a public meeting, or if we can just get three <laughs> and the rest on Zoom or something like that, I think we can work around that instead of having the public meeting announced. But either way, it works. Um, and then day two is December 1st, is um, 8 through 12 p.m., where we'll have a meeting with local leaders on design. We'll meet with the Chamber of Commerce, meet with local leaders from the economic development side, and then leaders in promotion and marketing, and then our leaders involved in other community civic efforts. And then the board will meet again and talk about those, um, what they've learned. As we move on into February, believe it or not, 2022, we'll move to transformational strategies where they're going to be sending out quite a bit of surveys. They've already sent me a survey, but we're under one right now, so we'll wait. They're sent a survey for small business owners in our area. Um, that I'll be releasing in about three days. Um, but th that's not to do with this. There's another set of surveys where they'll survey the community as well as leaders and just get an idea of what, um, you know, what their thoughts are and what uh, some great strategies might be that they would like to see implemented as well. Um, through that, uh, those will be on-site visits in February. And then there'll be community public meetings with the Main Street Board present. Um, in an evening at 6 to 8 p.m. as we start talking about the transformational strategies that we're going to take forward. Um, and then they're getting a meeting with the Main Street Board. So we have some meetings. There's another meeting coming. Hi, Mayor. Um, there's a meeting with Main Street Board in January in which we will be with uh, Coldwater and Roger City and we'll actually be um, doing uh, Main Street approach and model revitalization, Main Street board roles and responsibilities, board composition and recruitment. There'll be door orientation and training for us and giving us organizational structure and what the Main Street board of work looks like, and then leading through strategy and a number of next steps that they're going to place us into. So if you haven't met Lee or Laura, um, there are two excellent, I know you did, um, excellent pieces of resources that we're receiving as individuals. They're great, they've been helpful, they've been advocates for us as they went through this process to try to sell it for us, told us what to do. We worked on that application in detail and we got it to where it was um, in good shape for uh, to get a positive outcome. Um, so as we move forward, we're fully aware, I think, at, at board level that there's going to be a lot of hands-on work, a lot of training, and a lot of detail that comes with this. Excuse me, Dusty, yes. when you say the Main Street Board, you're referring to what is now the DDA. That's correct. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a great question because it doesn't end at the DDA. The DDA was a way to start this, and it has, as you know, a TIF, and it also has the millage, and that's one of our cash flows. But as we expand the Main Street Board, they don't look at it as um, just that group of individuals. They look at it as volunteers who want to join that board, so we could conceivably increase our board size um, with, with that impact. Um, and there's also um, uh, various uh, committees that will be formed and structured where we want to reach out and get a lot of volunteer um, work done. Up until now, we've had plenty of volunteers. Um, there's, there's some that it gets stretched sometimes, obviously, but there are a lot of volunteers from like our delicious and, and First Fridays and a number of things that we see, and we don't count them on the board. You know, I try to explain this at Main Street that, um, believe it or not, we do have volunteers that do a lot of things. We just haven't organized them and been effective about recruiting and a number of those other weaknesses I think we still have. So when you think of the University of the College and trying to get those kids organized and get them effective, we've had our fair share of stumbles when that happens. Um, we just have to get better at that volunteer organization and effectiveness. And it's one of their big efforts that they push forward. But as they get, if they dig into the market information we're gonna get, um, we've done building inventories now downtown. And Michelle and Greg worked hard on that, provided to us so we could put it in application. I think we have the best understanding we've had so far of what where things lie downtown, what's open, what's not, what's 
what's happening in, in our downtown, but uh, that director will have that knowledge and, and be able to, what's available downtown, what's happening with this building, what's happening with that building, what's the upstairs look like. Um, they really get you into data gathering and details, and that director is going to have quite a responsibility of providing that information, not only to us, um, but the Main Street organization. They have three organizations helping us, um, not just Main Street Michigan, but they have National Main Street sits as one of our training individuals as well, and they have somebody from the MEDC that will be with us. I bring up the MEDC. This is their program. This is one of Gretchen's favorite programs. And it's one of the, has the, probably the biggest impact she feels. And I think the, it's been around since the previous governor, been around since 2011, to tell you the truth. Um, so when we're doing applications for something like a brownfield or any other types of work in our downtown or in our city, there's a number of times you'll see the question, are you a Main Street organization? And the answer has been no so far. But today we get to say yes now. And that gives us points and a number of, Fronts. And as you know, I'm a big believer in downtown redevelopment, and uh, I think this adds a big piece to us. The technical assistance in the first five years is over $100,000, um, but that's not just what they do. They help facilitate projects and get us to the proper agencies, develop those relationships with those agencies, and get us some money. Just to be blunt. You know, there's a lot of these organizations, and you talk to them, they've, they've landed some fantastic grants. Get money allocated to them to be effective in some of their projects in the downtown. Um, and you see all kinds of things. So just visualize for a second the Gene Christopher property changed into some, I'm not going to say beer garden because I'll bring up that, but you know, changed it with the lights and the place to sit and you know, food and, and the light going, bring up food trucks. Um, and, and just trying to make something like that happen with, a, um, with downtown and all the business owners and all the volunteers is something we can rally on. As an example, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's something I would like to see happen. Um, and then you see the amount of development that's going in downtown, the amount of money that's coming here right now. Um, I don't think there's ever been a time where I want to would love to see our board, Main Street Board, be as strong as ever about being effective in communication with our downtown business owners, our building owners, and then to the general public. So I'm very excited, as you can tell. Um, this is something I've been pushing for a couple of years. Um, when we first went up there, we didn't know, you know, I can tell you, we didn't know what we were walking into, um, but they were gracious back then, and they shared with us what we needed to do to get back into the game for the select level. This was our last year and our last chance to, because we were about to get closed out, and uh, and then we'd had to start the engaged level all over, and I think we'd have lost the willpower, to tell you the truth, we would probably not push so hard. So I come back to thanking you. When I think of the commitment you made from not only uh, supporting our flowers downtown, 60 new pots, being able to water those, that's you guys. I think of the uh, electric car station, that's you guys. New trees, that's you guys. I'm glad you, you know we, we offer up our opinions and what we'd like to see, but you guys keep executing on our behalf, and we know that. We absolutely know that, and we appreciate it a lot. It's going to take a strong partnership between us and the commission going forward. Um, love to see you all involved in the groundwork that we're doing right now, as much as you can be, and to get those excited about it as well. If you've ever went to the Michigan Main Street, that's all you have to type in on Google, and you're going to see everything. Everything that they offer, all the tools, all the um, programs they're going to bring our way, and so um, pretty cool stuff. Questions? Now that we, we've been approved, how long is that approval for? Is it, is it a three-year, five-year term or indefinite? Great question. It's five years. This is a five-year select level. You have to stay in it five years. The end game is a mastery level. The end game is also being Main Street of America winner. You know, you can win it. Um, and what that means is that we will have effectively uh, made some place making in our downtown. We'll effectively build up buildings. We'll show a lot of progress as we move forward over the next five years. But as we move forward, are are we being judged by them? At the end of five years, did they pull the rug out from under us if we don't? Yeah, I, I, I don't believe that's the way. I guess it could if, if, if the organization, the Main Street organization, sort of fell apart and didn't work. And I gave you guys that caveat when I first came and sold this, and the idea that you guys will know. You know, our five-year, your guys' five-year commitment, you'll know if it's not cohesive, if it's not effective, 
if it's not making things happen, um, you guys are going to be able to say we're done, you know, and whenever you need to. But I don't believe that's the way it's going to come out. I do, I do believe we're seeing a lot of passion, a lot of, a lot of people learning a lot um, as we've gone through this. And I, as we reverberate it, we'd love to see you guys reverberate it. It really means something. Um, and there's only 24 of us in the state. And uh, when they're allocating funds, we're going to get showed favor status. And really want, you know, hopefully I'll be able to share some big ideas that are coming down the pipe and, uh, and with each of you, um, because there's a lot of ideas floating out there and a lot of excitement. So this gives us a chance to really access funds we need. Thank you, Mayor, for sitting there and supporting it through the whole process, too. She's been watching since day one. Kelsey, how will your board change when it comes from an engagement standpoint? Like getting out there, getting on boots on the ground when it comes to that? I know it's one of the big things you pushed, you know, with this is that, hey, all my board to kind of get up and get active. That's right. And, and not just show up at 8 o'clock in the morning kind of thing. So That's right. And so we're starting to see, and I would expect that there'll be some more turnover. So that was going to be up front with you. What it took to get to this stage, what it took before that, what it took to get to this stage. And then as we evolve into this next stage, there's going to be um, some expectations set on us from Main Street. And those expectations are going to lie on some people pretty heavy. They're going to have a hard time putting it into their schedule and being as committed as they need to be. So I would guess we'll have another set of turnover where we have more active engagement. Um, but this isn't the we go to the meeting, we finish the meeting, and we've done our work. Um, this means being out, out there with hands on. Um, that means everybody's out there pushing signage around or building tents or whatever it takes to make something happen. Um, I will tell you this there was a little piece of news that came last week that was pretty cool. And I want to give the kudos to Dave Thomas. Y'all know him from Culver's. So, Brother Colley was on the floor of the house. She calls him right after a vote. They fixed the Dara district. They, did, they had a problem with it that if they had a nonprofit come out into the streets and sell alcohol, then none of the other restaurants could bring sell any dara. So when, when Boys and Girls Club came down here, they were not happy. And when the, when the Crossville tried to come out on the street, they were not happy. This was tough. Remember, they had to get it into Barbers. It was all because of this law. It's passed the House. It's going to the Senate. I think it's going to breeze by. But you should have seen how excited Dave Thomas was. <laughs> so the nonprofits couldn't be anybody that was out there that was going to sell alcohol in the in the Dara district, then prohibit any restaurant from selling a Dara. Uh, providing yeah, their, their rule was we basically had to suspend the Dara district or the social district. That's right. Yeah. Social drinking district during the time that a nonprofit had one of these special liquor licenses to sell. Uh, temporary basis within the within the perimeter of the district. So why were the boys and girls club upset? I mean, they were because they just couldn't believe that we instituted this institute this, so they couldn't have an event because, because, because the way you yeah. make bank on that is the bar. Gotcha. Uh, they they really yeah, bar. Gotcha. <laughs> couldn't believe yeah. it. Yeah, they were they were saying, oh, yeah, Sarah was like, you made it impossible for us. And we're like, we didn't mean to because just south of the border in Ohio, they don't have that rule. Mm -hmm. So we were able to look at that and say, come on, right? Come on. And we got the idea, I think, out of Toledo. Remember, it was Dora. Mm -hmm. They got it from Toledo. Um, but Dave did all that work, by the way. I can't take as much credit except for mm -hmm. him after it. Except for the painted line, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's Matt's idea. <laughs> I thought it was Will. <laughs> no, no, that was Matt. Will doesn't like it because it's blue. Water. <laughs> blue is supposed to mean water. And I said, well, blue means don't dig there. So <laughs> I don't want anybody digging there. Anyway, so we're all good. Now, I, th I think you're seeing a lot of excitement in our, our board. There's ideas floating. There's constantly looking for ideas for all of us to sort of jump on and be a part of um, in the downtown. And, um, I really am happy with the board we have. I just have a feeling, like I said, once you start understanding how, how hard you're going to have to work, it may change again. Um, but you'll see. These other communities rallied and succeeded, and I think we will too. Now the meeting on the 30th. Yes. Tell me again, is that face-to-face -face or? This will all be virtual, 30th and December 1st. So.
When's ours? When you guys this will be at four. Four. Four to four point five. So we all can't be a part of that unless we call it a meeting. Right. So if you're all in there at Zoom. Theoretically, if you weren't talking about city business, it'd all still be there, but you know, that the safe thing would be to call that as a special meeting. Just open. So if it's virtual, we have to publish them that link like we do tonight. Anybody in the public could then join. I don't think that would cause some things. I think we ought to do it. And show for us all to be able to show support to the program. Great. Right. I, I would. I think public meetings would be fine. All for it. Most of them. Only forty-five. We yeah. weren't sure at the DDA meeting the other day if it was virtual or in person because one thing said in person and another thing said virtual, but then we thought we'd clarified that it was virtual for this. And then in February, we're going to need to meet again with them, and that one will be in person. So that we thought that's what it was, but we were making sure and clarifying that. Yeah, and I left this in your packets, this impact report. So from 2018 and 19, it's the greater after that. But at that time, there was 19.4 million in private investment. 10.35 came out of our state to our communities, to our, our, our first Friday, not first Friday, when we say Main Street communities, I got that in my head. Um, to our Main Street communities. And I keep thinking about this allocation of funds we're seeing right now, it's, it's you know, the city level, the county level, state level, and we've been missing out on that 10.3 million. That's what drives me, and that's what's driving me too, is that we should be a part of those 109 new businesses. There was 100 facade improvement programs. We don't even have our facade improvement program in place. And, and I understand that we, don't, you know, we haven't had a director per se, um, but that should be one of our tools for sure. And there's a number of tools we don't have available right now because of structure, so we're gonna be putting those in place. Yeah, thank you. Well, go ahead. Jesse, are you meeting with, um, I actually don't really answer this, so I'm asking, are you meeting with businesses before this even occurs on December 30th? Um, I just know that several have reached out to Greg and I, you know, asking and Greg has referred them on or said, I'm not sure if it will, you know, if it, if it will and touch on what you're looking for, but they're asking a lot of questions already since this announcement. Um, because they're not people that can regularly attend EDA, so they, they really, to those meetings, now Main Street meetings, but so they're, they're just wanting information and, you know, they're, they're excited, but they don't really understand and, and they want clarification. And I didn't know if there was something before that we could at least get in their hands to digest before they actually have that meeting. Yeah, I wrote a letter of introduction on it and then they put it on a Google uh, forms bill kind of thing to answer your questions, you know, what each of those business owners, that's not very personal. Um, for me to engage them at an individual level, I'd be glad to walk through the whole downtown and try to talk to each and every one of them to get involved. I think all of us can sort of do that. Um, it's going to be a numbers thing. You know, so often we start this strategic planning and we start the deep, deep dives. And, and I just, I remember going through it last year or the year before when we did it with Michigan State in 2019, strategic planning. The first meeting, there's 40 people there. We're doing breakout groups, we're having a blast, we're digging all into it. The next meeting, there's 10, and the final meeting, there's six. <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. when you start thinking about, is this strategic plan valid? Is it really what it's supposed to be? Is it really heard from all the voices we wanna hear from to, to add to this? Because that has been a weakness. So may I take that as an absolute, I'll make sure that we, we focus deeply on that. I would like to see 50, 60 people in these meetings. Well, going along with what the mayor said, since there was an article in the telegram, I've had, I don't know, probably four or five people ask me about it because they weren't, even after reading the article, they weren't really quite sure what this meant. Right. And I think that even getting something up on, you know, whether it be the city's web or website and Facebook would be helpful. Uh, I'll make sure we do that. I have been on the radio and I will be going back on the radio again about this. So you may have heard me on the Saturday morning programs, but I think we need to develop a, a, something for the telegram as well and get that out to everyone right away. Get that out there and printed so everybody can get a better understanding of what it means. 
um, to be a Main Street city. And to let them know that we're going to need a lot of volunteers. We are. <laughs> we are. You know, I think there are volunteers just sitting there that just haven't been asked. It's just been hard to be organized and get that done. Like if you, you know, when you ask for volunteer, you don't say, can you just come join our Main Street organization? Or can you come to this event and do that? That's the problem I think we have quite often is not setting that and, and making sure we, I will say that we sat out and we showed that a lot of this and, and the like, we sat out at the big first Fridays and we, we asked, we had a, a sheet that asked, would you be willing to volunteer? Would you be willing to make a financial contribution or do you support this in general? We found about 15 volunteers out in that and we didn't even work it that hard. We still can keep doing that. Um, but we also found like 10 that said they'd make financial contributions. By the way, we have had a number of commitments, just to give you an update, as that you have made an investment in this. That we have um, raised over 27, 28,000 pledges so far, and that's not even, I'm not even close to finishing our list. We're not even close. And now we can actually say we're select, so now we can say that we have a five-year commitment here. Um, but there are some big families, big names. And, big, and then there's a lot of small families. There's a lot of twenty dollars donations, and we've set up an apparatus to where you can make those donations. So we'll be blowing that out to the airways. Um, but remember, the responsibility of the Main Street is to pay for their their own stuff. <laughs> so, so when you think of the budget payroll, and one big part of that pie, thirty five doesn't cover it, right? We got to cover the rest with our fundraising and our activities. Um, this Dara development's big for us because if we have an Artalicious or something bigger. Something much more impactful, I you know that that's not impactful, but maybe something better where we can make some funds. Um, that was going to hinder us. As a matter of fact, when we had the, the Phoenix Theories, the, yeah, we could we paid for that and the wash through the sponsors. We weren't allowed to make any money that day. That was going to be a big one for us, but it was because of the dire restriction. But that was a great band. And thank you guys for your partnership. Couldn't do it without you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dusty. Our next item for tonight is to schedule a review. Which we're behind, and I will take full responsibility for. We were supposed to do this, and it completely got lost in the shuffle. So I deeply apologize for that. Um, so we're a little bit behind. We're not really far, but we're just a little bit a behind. A couple so. months better. Yeah. So. Uh, just a matter of selecting a date, uh, whether you want to do it or at one of your regular meetings as part of that, or whether you want to do it at a special meeting and special meeting, what date. Didn't we do a review after you had been here six months? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Yes. Was that six months ago? <laughs> that, and that's why I must start. Probably eight exactly. months ago now. Okay. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it Time seems flies. like we just did it, didn't it? Yeah, I know. Okay. I vote at the end of the meeting or. Yeah, at the end of the meeting, so we just get out. I mean, not to come just an extra day just right, to I do agree. that. I feel like that too. I mean, that's just. But we didn't know, you know, and that and that was the thing too is didn't know what everybody wanted to do because there's an extra Monday in this month because of uh, the 29th. Um, this is fifth Monday. So do you care that we're putting it out a few weeks? I'm just saying. I I don't mind, but I didn't know how everybody else felt. I don't mind. We've waited this long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like my extra Monday. Yeah. Especially if we're having a new event Tuesday already. You're right about that. Yeah. For, for Main Street. Main Street. Oh. Yeah. So we're meeting so Tuesday the 30th already. Right. I don't want to meet Monday right. night because we still have to. Were you thinking the 6th? You do the 6th? Yeah, yes. whatever it is. That's first. the next meeting. Yes, the next meeting. Is that even a meeting? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, Monday the 6th, the first one of the month. Okay. Without the agenda. Yeah. But I think more importantly, we have to figure out uh, how we're going to do this. Exactly. Because this will be, I don't know, for Al and I, it's our, the sixth time that we've basically fumbled through this. And I think that we need to come up with a program that is something that can be long term. And I know the first time that we did it, I was so upset. The form that we used was something that was 
pulled off on land someplace and it didn't wasn't relative to what we were doing at all. It was a waste of everyone's time. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I personally think that we need to pull up our strategic plan, base everything off the strategic plan, um, and then maybe come up with a, a you know good, better, best type of thing. Uh, this A, B, C, D stuff is, you know, that's for grade school. Um, and just come up with a, that way, if we always work along those lines, um, you know, you, you just have something that's more concrete. Um, I think coming into this particular uh, situation where even if we use the strategic plan as our base, it, it's flawed a little bit because of COVID and because of some of the other distractions that we've had to put up with over the last six months or so. But at least I still think the strategic plan gives us a good base to work from. The only thing about the strategic plan is that we did that back when Administrator Horn was here. So like, you know, that's not, that's the last time we did it. And that, I was actually gonna bring this up tonight is like, you know, with, you know, with Commissioner Miller on now, it's like, you know, Something with just resources. The, just the two of you worked on the plan. The rest of us right. haven't had anything. That's my do. point is that with the resources we have collectively as a city now and, and, and the vision, um, you know, maybe we should revisit the actual not maybe not a two-day <laughs> event, but like we used to effect the street plan, plan, you know, and 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 but I think he had, you know, Greg has something he can measure himself on too. Okay. So but to have to hold him accountable for the street plan that we set may chain carry out is not. That's right. Fair, and that's, right. Yeah, and that's sort of what I was saying when I said, you know, we had COVID was part yeah. of that stuff too. But yeah, let's just tweak the plan. Let's not try to rebuild it because the last thing I want to do is another strategic plan. Although we did one a couple of years ago because we were at um, we were at the armory when we did it. It was it was who was the we, We've done Maybe two. Shane. It was Shane. Oh, six years ago, yeah. five years ago. No, that was 18. Yeah. Um, so it hasn't been that long ago. So that, that it may not be that far out of date. Gotcha. It might still be working. But, uh, but, but, but I was saying, if, you know, if I was Commissioner Roberts, Commissioner Casper, Commissioner Gallus, and Mayor, I'd be like, you know, hey, it was like, I want to have some input on what the vision is now, you know, because, you know, she's been here four years and yeah. two more years, you know. And, well, I, at least, yeah. and I, I personally haven't revisited that strategic plan. We got lots of done. I mean, yeah. I mean really. But did. I mean, I haven't, I haven't, you know, sat down and looked at yeah. it. And I, I personally think that it would just be minor tweaks. Yeah. I think what Lad's saying is that the first one we did was like, you know, Ooh. how does the administrator deal with uh, staff in City Hall? We don't know. We don't, because we're not, we don't work in City Hall, you know, and, 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 and so stuff like that is just, that had nothing to do with our evaluation of. Of him, so um, it's kind of hard to gauge that a little bit. I think what I'm hearing, or what I would take from what you're saying about using a strategic plan, is to come up with what are the strategic plan objectives. Maybe there's ten of them, and then we do an assessment on whether those objectives should be something our city administrator should be evaluating. Um, I don't know if all of them should be but there it's not necessarily right. everything in the strategic plan or i don't know but that's that's what i'm thinking is what what were the objectives of the strategic plan and how how does the administrator's job relate to those objectives does that make sense at all or no? yeah, it was just sort of goals for the city and basically it was the city administrator is trying to make sure that we achieve those goals. And some of them may be, you know, we may look at some of them and go, well, okay, this is a goal that the administrator doesn't have a lot of control over. Right, this. So right. Or we, we voted it down. We said, oh, we, you know, well, we wanted a parks, you know, can we, or redo the parks uh, department, but we just did that. So we can't assess that goal, that strategic plan goal based on what Greg has done so far in that area. 
Well, I think basically we need to get a copy of the strategic plan <laughs> that we can all look at I and, where we had it. and it makes notes on it. Right. Yeah. So I have it somewhere. It's on it's on I have it. So I don't know where it is. We did a date and we got an idea of how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Else how, how, does that, how does reviewing the strategic plan get, give Greg quality data to use? That's, and that's, I, I hear you. Good and, and bad. And, like, because, like, you know, what, what can we work on? What can we, you know, what have we done well? Like, how does that give him the data that he needs to? I think what it does is I can say, okay, this is this is a a point that this is something that we want to drive the city in this direction. And if we think that Greg is taking us in that direction, we can say, yeah, we think that he's meeting the goals of this particular point, or you know, maybe he hasn't spent enough time with this. And you know, it's and and again, it's not so much a pass or fail, but it's you know good, better, best type of thing. And we just we have these bullet points that we can go through, but it's um, and and I think it would put the strategic plan in the front of Greg's mind more than it is now. And I I don't point a finger at him, but it's not in the front of my mind. I was part of the part of the group. I think it gives us an opportunity to talk about what's important to us mm -hmm. now, not what it was important four or five years ago. Right. And, and so as we sit down, we may, may not may be making judgments on this performance, but lot, you know, allowing a conversation about here's what we think it, you know, we want or we expect, and that'll give us something to carry forward in the future. So, but, I do it as I, you know, the three managers I have, I, I sit them in front of me. I said, this is, you know, these are the, what I think you're improving on. And this is what you need to improve on. How can I help you achieve my vision for the company? You're right. And he needs to know what, how we, what our vision is so he can implement it. And then he needs to have clear, decisive, so I, so I agree with you. He needs to have a clear measurement so he can be able to see, all right, well, they said I need to improve on this, but but my strengths are here, so I'm gonna go work on that. So so I, I get what totally what you're saying. So, but what's the formula we use? That's the question, you know. And you know. When you say formula, you're saying because um, because if I were in his shoes or any. Because I don't work for anybody in my private life, but if I was getting evaluated, I want to know what my, you know, how am I doing? Like, you know, when it comes to what, what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, you know, and then, and then I want to know from my superiors, you know, how can how can they help me achieve my, you know, the goals they want me to implement, you know, kind of thing. So, what's the what's the formula do you use to evaluate him or anybody, essentially, you know, to make sure that you get to that? So you can say, I guess we could all say. We could all do our own evaluation and say, on, on this particular thing, you're doing great. On this per particular issue, there's room to improve. Uh, on this particular issue, um, you've fallen down. That just gives yeah. an opinion of, that we all have. And I, I think we need to be able to give collective direction. But would, would you be giving collect, collective direction if everybody did that? And then you could say, OK. Four people said room to improve. Two said great. I mean, that is that good enough, or is that? Greg, you weren't here in two thousand eight. Jump right after this, were no, you? No. No. I have a I'll problem with evaluating Keep someone on something that he had he and us had no idea he was going to be evaluated on. I, I don't think that's fair. But the thing is, when you, when you read it, it's, this is not, you know, these are basic concepts. They are the, review the, the, and the, revise financial methods and funding options. Create a community change. communication campaign. Maintain the entire city as developmental ready. 
sustained effort to leverage community investment, citywide energy optimization and sustainability program, initiate ambulance transport and fire department, and city commission administrative assured accountability. Those are the seven goals. And then there's a bunch of action steps under it. But my my question, my statement is: Have have you? Did you even know that these have were the action steps? Any, any or enough of that to grade them on that? Because I feel like I've forgotten about this, and I, I I'd have to really look through these goals to say. Yes, we've done this, but I didn't even realize we were doing it at the time, or wow, we really have not, as a commission, focused on these things. And that should not be a reflection on our city administrator. That's why I said, um, you know, COVID and things have sort of changed that. And this is just sort of a, a basis, and that can be changed. It's a guide for this very okay. first time. And yeah, we, we would need to tweak it moving forward, but at least it's something. Otherwise, oh, we don't have anything. That suggests that a, you know, a review doesn't have to be backward looking necessarily. A review could be forward looking. I only know the review I have, but I remember Nathan Bird saying, well, his reviews were kind of like conversations. That yeah. You I took from that that they were a discussion of where you wanted him to go in the next year coming up. Uh, certainly, the strategic plan could be a, a tool for uh, assisting that kind of a session. If that's what you want. But I would love to know his opinion of that. Like, did he feel like he got enough of that just by the kind of round table? So maybe he told you. I don't know. We'll talk about the meeting. You want to tell me what he really said? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know if he really got. I mean, because somebody is, I mean, Nathan's former council member. I mean, he, he knows how it works. So did he feel like he got enough out of that review? Um, he's like, all right, here's what they want, and, and let me go carry it out kind of thing. So maybe not, um, but uh, there you go. I also don't, also don't think he was disappointed. Right, uh, right. Oh, sorry. sure. Exactly. <laughs> Great. I was like, but the thing was, that the, I, I felt like it was pretty informative. I felt like everybody said what they wanted to say. And at the end, Nathan had a chance to talk too. And I thought that was really, really good. I mean, he was very prepared. And so we had some very good dialogue. I personally felt like when the meeting was over, everybody had a, a better idea of where, where we needed to go as a group. And I think that he, he felt better too. At least that's how I walked out of the room. Thinking. I think valuations can be very, very supportive. It would be um, a working document that, that is very fluid from time to time and step to step. Sometimes we can have a, a strong vision about what we think that evaluation should be. Evaluations can be a double-edged sword. I mean, evaluators sometimes have no business doing what they're doing. We have to watch how we travel to constructing an evaluation. So it is constructive, so it is supportive, so it is uh, forward thinking and uh, futuristic in its approach, where are we now and where are we going kind of thing. So right now we don't have that really solid working document, but but the strategic plan is probably the best that we have moving forward right now. It's something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what are we doing? We're trying to work. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Oh. You know, <laughs> without it, we might as well go online and download uh, what we did with Shane Horn. Yeah. Oh. An open discussion can also be very informative if it's structured correctly. We have an outline, we have some parameters, and we have some that can also, so it doesn't go down to a bunch of people just. <laughs> Have a structure to it, and have a very informative. So. You know, it's, an, it's also opportunity 
for the person being being evaluated to throw out their ideas on how things could be better. And you know, so times, you know, so many times in the past in, in my career, you give a, you would give evaluations, and the person being evaluated would start sharing ideas that you didn't even you never thought of. And you, and you never thought to ask. And there's nothing wrong with that either. If we're sitting here as a group doing an evaluation and Greg's got an idea saying, so you know, have you guys ever thought of, of this rather than just telling me what, what you want? Have you ever thought about this? Or have you ever thought about why I do the things that I do that sometimes you don't like? But let me tell you why. And, and I think that's important too. Well, when we did Dinkman's evaluation, I can't tell you anything that I said or anything that anybody else said except for what Nathan said that night. Oh, and that can be important. Well, we got three weeks to get the uh, process. Though. We can get our act together. And I do know, uh, um, you know, as other as time permits, but do you not have to bring up a few points? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, not related to that, but yeah, yeah no, exactly. A lot of things, uh, potential agenda items for you, uh, tonight that uh, were not on your published agenda. Um, uh, first one I'll mention is the half day before Thanksgiving, which has sort of been a tradition here. Uh, of late, going back, I think, to Mayor Perryman. Uh, but I know that you had, and that would normally be on this agenda if you were going to never been adopted as an official city holiday. And when we added three holidays, official holidays this year, there was some discussion about this half day and whether that would be a thing going forward or not. I don't recall where you all came down on that. So staff, some of the staff asked us today if that was something that we were, we were gonna do again this year. Obviously we didn't put it on the agenda, but um, Throw that out there for you. If you're interested in doing that again this year, we have a resolution prepared that you can add to the writing. I thought we agreed on it. I thought we had to. Yeah. When, 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 you, when you heard Chuck to me, I'm like, we didn't agree on that. I really thought we did. But did we agree to continue it? Or agree That's what I thought. I, I, think, I, I think we've done it ever since I've been. I thought we did. I thought, I, thought, I thought we actually passed resolution that it would be. We did. We didn't make that one of the official holidays. Oh, well, let's make it one. Well, we can we can fix it for this year and then make okay. it the official holiday when we do the calendar next year. All right. So I've got a. I'll give you a resolution to pass around that will be that item. Not the other item, <laughs> Kristen had uh, the owners of the uh, Cameron building come to, the, to her this week, girl, after the agenda deadline, with an application for uh, an Oprah district for that building. Oprah is uh, obviously the uh, Property Revitalization Act that essentially freezes the taxable value so that uh, improve the property completely for a period of time to pay the uh, cap taxable value uh, set up uh, for redevelopment. Uh, we've done them in the past. We've been one for the strong back building among other properties. Uh, it is late. The uh, State Tax Commission likes to see these in October. They wanted to try to get it in this year, see if it's possible. So she has a, prepare, a resolution prepared here. I have that and a copy of the application. All we would ask you to do tonight is not take any action on that, but just set a public hearing for December 6th, if you're so inclined, so that they can have a shot at uh, getting their application in still during this calendar year. Willing to add that tonight? Uh, I have that resolution and a copy of the application. Well, all we're doing is freezing their taxes at the current level. Well, all we're doing tonight would be setting a public hearing on that question for December 6th. But that's what that would, that's, that's what, what, what the application would request. Okay. 
Since it's setting a public hearing, do we are we going to amend the consent agenda? Uh, you could. You could put it on the amend the consent agenda to put it on there. I have a resolution number because we don't know where it's going to go yet. I just thought about that because I know we've sat for the panels before and it's on agenda since we've gone to that. But since it's an amendment, this is just my opinion. That's why I'm asking. Because it's an amendment, I don't feel comfortable putting it in the consent agenda. That's just my opinion. I feel like it looks shady and it's like hidden down in there then. And so my opinion is not to do that. But that's why I was asking that question. And I didn't get a chance to ask you that earlier, but I feel that it needs to be very transparent and not hidden in the consent agenda because of it being an amendment. But just to know. I mean, that is certainly your thought. It doesn't have to be that. Yeah. So being in the regular. Are you, are you all okay with that being in the regular agenda? I just don't want to be in the. No, I'm good. Absolutely. I got your copy here. Oh, phone call. Oh, okay. These are the original. Yeah. 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 Hey, that's all I have to merit. Yes, right, I need a, to. Are we okay with going right to public comment? Because we're almost at seven. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we will open it up for public comment. Just to reiterate, please state your name and address. Dean Ramos, 422 South Winter Street. Of course, we've written numerous times. This time, our leg says, I'm glad you're not putting in the consent agenda because you just now decide to add it. But I'm glad you're not putting on the consent agenda. Like the consent agenda, but more so because it's something that's not. Yeah. Um, thank you for bothering to do that. I didn't think you guys had talked about the Thanksgiving half day before. That's all I have for now. Hearing no other public comment. Uh, may I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, wasn't on here. Commissioner Comments, sorry, go ahead. Just a quick thing. Um, I'd like to thank Greg, Matt, whoever, uh, but the alley lights between the yoga studio and Joanne's yoga building are for the first time. Years. <laughs> no. Both of them. Mayor, Mayor, just go ahead to the regular meeting. I'll tell you all now. Uh, uh, Kathleen Griffith is from uh, Mr. Baluli's office, is sitting in for him tonight on Zoom. So if you have any... Good evening. Hey, Kathleen. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, when she asked for uh, public comment, I usually do. All right, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We will reconvene in five minutes. I call to order the Adrian City Commission for meeting for November 15th. 2021, if everyone would please rise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Heath. 
Present. Commissioner Hope. Present. Commissioner Roberts. Present. Commissioner Miller. Present. Commissioner Strayer. Present. Commissioner Castleberry. Present. Commissioner Gowes. Present. All commission members present. May I get a motion to amend the agenda to add resolution R21-170 from the city commission to approve the closure of city facilities on Wednesday, November 24th, 2021 at 12 p.m. and give all full-time and regular part-time city employees a paid half day off. And to also add resolution R21-171 from administration, the obsolete property rehabilitation exemption certificate public hearing and to set that public hearing. So moved. Second. Yes. Sorry. I have a motion from Commissioner Gauss with a second from Commissioner Miller. Roll call, please. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Mayor Heath. Yes. Motion to amend the agenda to add resolution R21-170 from the City Commission to approve the closure of city facilities on Wednesday, November 24th at 12 p.m. and give full, all full-time and regular part-time city employees a paid half day off and to add resolution R21-171 to set a public hearing for obsolete property rehabilitation exemption certificate was approved by an all yes vote. May I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Helt with a second from Commissioner Castleberry. Roll call, please. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. yes. Commissioner Gow. Yes. Mayor Heath. Yes. 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 Consent agenda approved. Consent agenda approved. Moving on to the regular agenda. Moving on to the regular agenda. Ordinances. Ordinances. We have a first reading and introduction only. This will be ordinance 21-010. First reading and introduction of an ordinance to amend the City of Adrian Zoning and Development Regulations, Article 5. Sections 5.0 to 5.2. And Article 25, Sections 25.02 25.05, 25.11, and 25.15 through 25.18 with regard to child care facilities. Moving on, special order dash one, public hearing to hear and consider comments regarding the completion of the downtown rental rehab grant under the Michigan Community Development Block Grant Program. So at this time, I will call that public hearing to order. If anyone wants to comment, they may do so at this time. Hearing no comment, I call this public hearing closed and we will be moving on to resolutions. Resolution R21-166 is from the city commission. It is a resolution to appoint a mayor pro tem. May I get a motion to adopt the resolution? Move to adopt the resolution. I mean, we need to elect somebody, sorry. Need, need a name? Yes, we need a name to go with that. I would like to nominate Commissioner Allen helps for that position. Support. Second. Yes. Okay, so we have a, a motion to appoint Mayor Pro Tem as Commissioner Allen Helt. Are there any public comments? Are there any commissioner comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Strayer with a second from Commissioner Gauss to appoint Mayor Pro Tem for Commissioner Allen Helt. Roll call, please. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Mayor Heath. 
Yes. Commissioner Hope. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Motion to appoint Allen Commissioner Allen Health as Mayor Pro Tem is approved by an all yes vote. Resolution R21-167 is from the City Commission. It is a resolution to appoint an acting mayor. May I get a motion to appoint and adopt the resolution? I'd like to make a motion to appoint Commissioner Kelly Castleberry to that position. Support. So we have a motion to appoint as acting mayor, Commissioner Ka Kelly Castleberry. Are there any public comments? Are there any commissioner comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Strayer with a second from Commissioner Helt to appoint as acting mayor, Commissioner Kelly Castleberry. Roll call, please. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Mayor Heath. Yes. Commissioner Helt. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Motion to appoint Commissioner Kelly Castleberry's acting mayor is approved by an all yes vote. Resolution R21-168 is from the City Commission. It is a resolution to appoint a city official to the Planning Commission. May I get a motion to appoint and adopt this resolution? I move to appoint Commissioner uh, Mary Roberts to city official to be the city official on the Planning Commission. Support. I have a motion to appoint Commissioner Mary Roberts to the Planning Commission as the city official. Are there any public comments? Are there any commissioner comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Castleberry with a second from Commissioner Gauss to appoint the city official as um, Commissioner Mary Roberts to the Planning Commission. Roll call, please. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Support. Mayor Heath. Yes. Commissioner Help. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. Motion to appoint Mary, Commissioner Mary Roberts as the, the city official to the Planning Commission is approved by an all yes vote. Resolution R21-169 is from the City Commission. It is a resolution to reappoint Monica Savage to the Adrian District Library Board for a three-year term. May I get a motion to adopt the resolution? Move to adopt the resolution. Or Are there any public comments? Are there any commissioner comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Roberts with a second from Commissioner Castleberry. Roll call, please. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Mayor Heath. Yes. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Resolution adopted by unanimous vote. Resolution R21-170 is from the City Commission. It is, it is to approve the closure of city facilities on Wednesday, November 24th, 2021 at 12 p.m. and give all full-time and regular part-time city employees a, pat, a paid half day off. May I get a motion to adopt the resolution? Move to adopt. Support. Are there any public comments? Are there any commissioner comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Castleberry with a second from Commissioner Helt and Commissioner Strayer. Roll call, please. Mayor Heath. Yes. Commissioner Helt. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Resolution adopted by unanimous vote. Resolution R21-171 is from administration. It is to set a public hearing for the obsolete property rehabilitation exemption certificate. 
for 115, 117, 119, and 121 South Main Street. May I get a motion to adopt the resolution? Move to adopt the resolution. Support. Are there any public comments? Are there any commissioner comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Roberts with a second from Commissioner Strayer. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hope. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Strayer. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Mayor He. Yes. The motion to set the public hearing at the next commission meeting is approved by all yes vote. Commissioners, there are miscellaneous reports in your packet. Are there any comments or questions on those reports? Mayor. Commissioner Roberts. I'd just like to say I really, I don't know if enjoy, but I appreciate receiving the inspection reports and all of the movement that we are gaining. And it's, it's really fascinating to see what's commented on and what's been taken care of. So thank you for including the reports with our packets. Moving on to public comment, we are going to start in house first with public comment. And then once we are finished with public comment, we will open it up for Zoom. Just to reiterate, there is a three minute time limit, which you will see on the screen. And for the record, please state your name and address but we will start inside first. Keen Ramos, homeowner of 422 South Winter Street. You know me by this part, at least most of you do. Um, just keep it brief. It's now getting dark out sooner. So hopefully you all see that the lighting really does suck on a lot of the, around lots of parts of the city. Hope you'll take notice of that and hope you'll make some plans to start uh, addressing some of that street lighting in the future and some of the park lighting. And I assure you, I'll let you know about A3 stuff at like the next meeting when it's a little closer. Um, other than that, I still don't know why we left those Christmas tree lights up all year round, but it's almost that time again. Thank you. At this time, we will open up public comment for those on Zoom. Hearing no public comment, are there any commissioner comments? <clears throat> commissioner Heltz? I just want to say thank you to my peers. Um, it's pretty cool to be elected by the public twice, but it's just as cool to be elected by your peers. So thank you. I would also like to welcome Commissioner Miller to his first meeting and thank you for your input. He was already giving input in a pre-meeting and we appreciate it. And uh, we're very glad to have you here on the city commission with us. So welcome. Thank you to everyone. Thanks so much. May I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Miller with a second from Commissioner Gauss. All in favor say aye. Aye. Actually, was it Strayer? Commissioner Strayer? Well, I thought it was you. It sounded. That's all right. <laughs>